Hey guys, how you doing? It's Kev Tech here bringing you another video on information technology. I hope you're having a good day. Happy Sunday. And today I want to do lab 13. So lab 13 is a little more, um, shouldn't be that long. Hopefully it's a ticketing system. Um, why we should understand the ticketing system, why we use it, um, how do we use it to help us out? Um, and uh, I'll give you an option of a free ticketing system that actually you could use on your own to help you out and help you in your IT career if you're brand new to IT. Obviously, if you're new to my channel, do IT videos, let's just do desktop support videos about how to get into IT. So as always, rate, comment, subscribe. Hit the notification bell, that way you know when I go live, okay? Really appreciate it. So yesterday I went over um, lab 12, which is about printers and adding a printer to a server. Today I wanna to go over a ticketing system. The ticketing system is gonna be called Spiceworks. Why am I going over that one? It's because that one is free. If it's free, take advantage of it. So, I mean, I have my own that I pay for, but like if you want a free one, and you want to utilize it to the full extent of its ability, and it's it's completely free. You can do whatever you want with it. I recommend downloading and running SpiceWorks, and I recommend joining SpiceWorks SpiceWorks community because there's a lot of IT professionals, probably over four hundred thousand, maybe more. A lot of people know that company. So, like, if you if you go to my resume resume template, I have a section that says ticketing system. It says SpiceWorks on it. Why does it say that? It's because it's free and it's something you can learn on your own. You could, add, you could add it on your resume. After watching this, you could add it on your resume and you can learn it on your own. I suggest you create an account. I suggest you log into it. I suggest you learn the ticketing system. And I suggest understanding why a ticket is created, what's the point of a ticket, um, who it gets assigned to, and stuff like that. All right. So let me share my screen with you and show you what I'm talking about. So we're going to go into screen one. First thing I want to do is I am going to log into uh, Spiceworks. So the I'm already logged in, by the way. So Spiceworks is absolutely free. Like I said, like I'll leave it below in the description. If you go into Spiceworks, um, you type it in. You go in here. Immediately when you when you log in and create an account, you just create an account, confirm your email address, and it's free. Like I'm I'm gonna keep saying it. it's free. So why why not under why not why not use it if it's free? It doesn't make any sense, right? So it like there's a community in here. And then there's there's a community in here, and then they, they, if you want to ask questions or you need help with something, there people are always willing to help. You have IT professionals, you have people that are brand new, you have people that are starting in IT, you have a little bit of everything, and it's 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 really interesting. You have different categories too, for whether whether it's Linux, Apple, uh, networking, database, DevOps, whatever you want, you already could think of. You know, it's free, so like. Literally, you could go into one of these discussions here and talk to the community as a whole and gain knowledge from other people. I always tell people like you should go ahead and join these platforms, whether it's Discord, whether it's a community online, whether it's LinkedIn and all these other platforms. If it's free, go ahead and join it and see what you can learn from it. You may learn something from that person or that or that user or that client. You don't know. So take advantage of it. Okay. All right. So what I wanted to show you is in Spiceworks, I wanted to show you there's this tool call help desk. So if you go to help desk and this is cause you know, I'm, I'm obviously I'm, my, my video is on help desk, right? So what you do is you, you click launch help desk and this is, this is the Spiceworks ticketing system. So for you, I recommend you create an account and I recommend you create a ticketing system or a ticketing account. Cause it's going to ask you to create a username and password and you log into this and then you start making your own tickets. Like, see, I'm already have two tabs open like this one. I would just make a brand new ticket. It could be whatever you want. And then you know you assign it to the person. So I I, I wanna I wanna quickly get out of this for two seconds and give me a second. And I wanna show you because I have I did make a video on this already like a while ago, and I'm gonna actually grab that screenshot and bring it over here. So because it's very important. So when you create a ticket, and I gone over this before. When you create a ticket, you have to understand that the ticketing systems, there is something called policies and procedures. So what do I mean by that? So a ticket you may not be able to do it. But maybe you have someone that does level two. They may be able to do it. Um, maybe they, maybe you're level two and you can't do it. So maybe you have to sign as a sysadmin or network admin or Linux admin or cybersecurity. So for you, understand your policies, your procedures. Uh, understand, understand why it's done that way. Understand why a ticket goes to this person or that person. You don't want to be assigning a ticket to the wrong person in your environment because they're going to get really frustrated and annoyed. Like, dude, this is a network admin ticket. Why are you, why are you assigning this to Linux? Or dude, why are you assigning a Linux ticket to, to someone at the cybersecurity? It doesn't make any sense. So understand what ticket goes where in your department or your company if you have a job or you're working in a company. So 
the important thing about this, if you take anything from today, is when you go to a job interview and they ask you, like, are you familiar with a ticketing system? You say, yeah, I'm familiar with Spiceworks. I'm familiar with creating a ticket, assigning a ticket, and closing a ticket, and putting notes on it. So all you care about in help desk or IT support is creating the ticket, assigning the ticket, or assigning it to yourself or the person that is in, that it's going to take care of it, and then closing the ticket and then putting notes on it and putting documentation notes on it. So like what you did to close it, not in depth, obviously, but something you did to close. You don't want to get too technical on the, you know, closing the whole ticket. And then you put everything you did from the beginning to the end, just put like notes on it of something that makes sense. So then that way, you, if you ever have that issue again, you could go back in time and search your old tickets and then figure out what you did to resolve it, if that makes sense. So that's the reason why you documentation that does help you. Okay. So I'm going to close out of that. Cause I wanted to go over that real quick. And um, yeah, so then there are these, there's these free applications you have on the, on the, the Spiceworks community or Spiceworks, you know, it's just free, absolutely free. So I, I suggest for you, you know, they have VMware too, if you want to create VMware, or download Hyper-V. I suggest for you, if you're brand new to IT, I suggest you go into cloud help desk and learn the ticketing system and start creating your own tickets, start troubleshooting your own issues and figure out what's going on. Like, you know, how to close a ticket, you know, just, just get comfortable with it because in the real life environment, whether you work help desk or not, people, people could, people are going to say no to me or whatever. I don't know whatever it is, but you're going to have some sort of ticketing system, whether it's Jira, whether it's service now, whether it's remedy force, whether it's spice works or something else, you're going to always going to have some sort of ticketing system. And if they're not using a ticketing system, they're probably using email like a company email, they're sending back and forth and you close it out as an email. So it really depends where you work, but for the most part, usually all of these companies use some sort of ticketing system. So just remember that. So for someone that's brand new, I recommend you learn that and, and take advantage of these applications. Like, like see here, it has cloud help desk, it has community dashboard for monitoring apps. It has inventory to see all tools. Um, you got you got your infrastructure. You got your support end users. Like you want to do start a remote session, and then when you click on start a remote session, you want to. So this is like so it's similar to Bumguard. So if you ever use Bumguard, you you tell the user, oh, go to black 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 support .com, whatever, and log into that, and I'll give you a session key. The session ID is. 494, blah, 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 blah. So today I wanna to go over this because I wanna show you how that works. So for the sake of this video, I'm gonna open up a VM. I'm gonna open up desktop two, um, log in as Patty, and I'm gonna put welcome one on this. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna remove it from, because this is static IP, I'm gonna remove it from a static IP and I'm gonna make it an IP, I'm gonna make it that it obtains the, the HCP automatically. So that way, I could actually could connect to the web browser and do whatever I want with it, if that makes sense. And I'm going to show you how this works, okay? Because in IT, you need to understand this because a lot of times you will be doing a screen share or you'll be walking through telling someone how to, how to do a certain thing online, if that makes sense. Like, oh, um, you know, you can't get on the screen. Oh, but yeah, I need, I'm going to walk you through how to do this. You send them screenshots, you send them pictures, you do whatever you want. But at the end of the day, you either will be doing a remote session or you'll be doing something else. So keep that in mind. I'm going to do allow. Let's give that a second. And then I'm going to do, uh, it's on the network. All right, good. And then I'm going to do this one right here. It should work. Shouldn't be blocked. You see right away, if you know how to, if you know how to use VM, if you know how to use virtual box, then you know what to do to change the settings. I already have the IP address saved somewhere. I took a screenshot of it, which is right, right over here. So I'm not going to worry about it. So then what I would do is for the sake of this video, I'm going to go to that website. I'm going to go to, I'm going to go into join dot Zoho dot com. Right. And then it says enter your, enter your session ID. So my session ID is four, nine, four, three, eight, five. 705 and I'm going to put uh Tim and I'm going to put join session. 
and put download. Go ahead, run. Then when you do that, I should be able to see what they're doing. So when you do that, it says waiting for confirmation. So it says, are you are you about to join a remote desktop session? Support session, we're able to control your screen along with the ability to transfer files. You're okay with that? Yeah, join. So now, if you do that, you see over here in my web browser, I have control of the screen now. So I could I could do whatever I want. I could I could open up CMD. I could I could close the tabs. But now it's open right now, and you have these three dots right over here. I have your connection settings, change the ports. I do view, view actual size or full screen. You know, it says one hundred percent. Could change it, show mouse. I can invite another technician. So sometimes you may, sometimes you may encounter an issue where you cannot fix it yourself for some, for whatever reason, you can't fix it yourself, and the user really needs help with with something, and you you just like stuck helping a user and like, damn, I can't fix this. I need help from someone. So you go ahead and select Skype or ping whoever you have. Like, hey, bro, can you help me out? Yeah, yeah. And you you invite you invite someone. So yeah, you could obviously this is a free version. But you could invite someone, and then there's. Send all, all tab, disable input. You do send control delete, um, run service. Then here is gonna prompt it's gonna prompt you for your admin rights. So if you wanna if you wanna actually do it, you you should be able to do it. So always when obviously keep in mind that always when you're running these things, you're always gonna have some sort of like admin credentials or something like that. So do administrator and then we're gonna do. So when you do that, control delete, should let you do it. It may not let you do it. It's probably the service is not gonna let you run it, which is fine. It's totally fine. Um, let's see, you can add programs. So like, these are all the things you could do on this. So I suggest you take advantage of it. It's free, like take advantage of it. You could open up command prompt, force them to open up command prompt. Um, you could open up control panel for them if you want. Uh, you could open up Device manager, if you want. No, I put the password wrong. That's probably why. This is waiting for customer to enter the credentials. Just give me a second. So this is this is the this is the customer. So I'm gonna put my admin account. And I'm spelling administrator wrong. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna go back to the, the tab screen. Sorry about that, it might, might be a little confusing for you guys. It's just elevating the account right now. So right now it's still on it. Like it's just here, waiting for a connection, waiting for connection. It's just, it's just elevating the account right now at this point. So I, I elevated the, you have to elevate your account sometimes when you're doing these screen shares, you have to elevate your account. So just give it a second. There we go. Now it's back to normal. So now you could actually, if you want, control delete should work now. There we go. So you should be able to do control delete now. Um, and then you could actually shut down the computer. You could do a screenshot if you want. I actually got to upgrade. I can't do that right now, obviously, but a screenshot if you want. Huh, who knows? Maybe you're maybe you're 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 doing CM. Maybe a user's having an issue with an application, right? Like that they, they can't open Zoom, for example, right? See how I'm on the, how I'm on this screen right here, right? And they can't open Zoom for and they're getting an error message. You go to your computer, right? And then you go open open up Snippet. Because Snippet is absolutely free. You don't even got to worry about Snippet. So you can open up Snippet or whatever you want. You can open up Sketch if you want. The Sketch does the same thing. You open up Sketch or, or something else, right? You hit New. And then you just take a screenshot or whatever. And then you put notes on it, right? So like, there's so many things you could do. Like here, it's pretty cool. Yeah, event viewer. Maybe you want to check their logs for some for whatever reason. Um, display. So yeah, you have all these things right over here on, on the right side. It tells you their session. It tells you the device name. It tells you the computer. It tells you the operating system. You could you could do a chat with them if you like. Hi. Checking your computer now. Is it okay? to check your application now okay oh is it okay to check your your issue 
I'm happy to happy to help. You know, like you get all those messages right there, right? And let me go back to the let me close out of this. Let me go back to the desktop. See, and it, it actually shows all that, right? So then you you have the left screen. So you have this and this. You have your left screen. You have firewall. You have run as command system information because you, you elevated the account. So you want to keep in mind that you elevated the account. So now you're running as admin on everything. So you, if you're doing a screen share, you want to elevate the account. Once you elevate the account, then you can do whatever you want on this. You, you go, you go to town with, you go to town with this I'm telling you right now, you go to town with this. So you do a voice call to that voice call files. If you want to move files over then maybe there's a file that they're missing to run Cisco, any connect. VPN or something like that, you can move the file over over here. So this is just one application. I mean, I don't wanna, I don't wanna like go too in depth with this, but it's just an example of what you could do with Spiceworks. Whether it's Spiceworks, whether it's Bumguard, whether it's SSEM, whether it's Avanti or some other screen share application, you wanna get familiarized with this. So yeah, and then once you're done, you hit okay. And then everything should go back to normal. And then the screen should come back up, you hit okay. It says session has ended, and then you're good to go after that. So for you guys, yeah, it says end right now. Close. So for you guys, I recommend, if I was you, I recommend, I'll leave this. I recommend launching help desk, creating tickets, and also I recommend practicing with that screen share, like I just showed you on a VM to get familiarized with it because in, um, let me stop sharing for a second. Um, in IT world, you will be doing that. You'll be doing a screen share, just like what I did just now. You'll be elevating your account. Sometimes a control delete doesn't work for them. So you could do it for them and then you can have them change their password. Maybe you have to move a file over. And then I want you to get familiarized with ticketing systems like Spiceworks or something else. This is free. So like take advantage of it. And then you create your own little tickets there and close them out as you see fit. So that's it. That's pretty much it for today. I don't want to go too in depth. Today is um, Lab 13, just Spiceworks, closing tickets, assigning tickets, um, basically doing screen share and why it's being used that way, if that makes sense. This is what this will be done in a job environment. Obviously, you have your policies, you have your procedures, you have your approval process, you have some sort of ticketing system, and you assign it to the appropriate IT person, if that makes sense. And you'll get training on this, by the way, when you get your job. So don't worry about like, Oh my God, there's so much information. I'm going over it. I'm going over this. So then you're less stressed out when you go to an actual job. Oh, they have a ticketing system. Oh, what kind of ticketing system do you guys use? Uh, use ServiceNow. Oh, you ServiceNow. Okay, I use Spiceworks in my in my, uh, in my my project. Oh, you, they, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know about ScreenShare? Yeah, I use ScreenShare with Spiceworks. You know, I'm familiar with that. I'm familiar with elevating my account. I know that my account, may, I'm, I know that I can't install this program on a screen share, unless I elevate my account, putting my admin credentials, you know, stuff like that. Gives you the ability to actually talk about something in a job interview. That's the purpose of this lab, okay? And that's it, that's pretty much it. With that being said, I hope you guys have a great day. As always, rate, comment, subscribe, give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. As always, I hope this video helps you out in some shape or form. And this is just for help that's going to you. Obviously, um, I'll go more in depth with other videos. And with that being said, I hope you guys have a great day and I hope you guys have a great Sunday. Take care, peace, later.